And so you get home. Get home. And did Renaissance High come calling, or did you uh, did you go to them? It, it kind of came calling. I was I was recruiting. I was um going after a lot of college positions. Like I said, I got my master's degree. Mm-hmm. You know, and I got ten years coaching. I mean, playing experience. You know, I'm international. And all these different things that colleges look for, I'm like, well, it's a no-brainer. Everybody's going to jump on a Shane LaWall bandwagon. But when you start applying to different places, you realize nobody cares about that resume that you think they care about. It's all about connections and relate, not even connections. Connections is a bad word. Relationships, you know, and relationships are not microwave. They're organic. So they, they take longer to grow. So imagine when you, if you've been gone for 10 years, if me and you both graduate from the same place, you know, let's say you, you were the seventh man on the bench and I, I was the third. By the way, that's being very generous to both Tony and I. <laughs> and I don't make benches long enough for me. No. <laughs> and I'm the third star on the team. So I go overseas right away. You stay right there and say, hey, coach, can I be your um, grad, grad assistant? You know, can I be your student manager? So now you get two years of, that's considered coaching. You get two years of coaching experience as a grad assistant. Now you go over to Arizona State as their video coordinator or as their director of basketball operations for three years. Now you got you got that minimum five years of coaching, college coaching experience that everybody wants. You know, and you have that by the age of 25. I'm still playing basketball with zero years coaching experience. You know, so when I finally get home at the age of 32, you have 10 years coaching experience. I have zero. So when we both put our resumes next to each other, in theory, you'll say, well, he played ball. He knows the game, this, that, and the third. But they're like, yeah, but he's got 10 years coaching experience. It's a no-brainer. So unless you're a guy like Mickey McConnell where, you know, somebody at St. Mary's has a job just waiting on you and you just walk in at the right time. Man, there's such a long list of guys who stayed home and were just building their actual re- their, the, the resume that counts while you were gone just with an empty resume. You know what I mean? It doesn't mean you can't get on, but they will want you to, to kind of come through the BS, you know, and you're just kind of like, well, yeah, it's not for me. You know, so I met, I, you know, I, I applied for a lot of assistant coaching positions, no, barely got a call. I almost got the girl, the women's uh, assistant job at Wayne State. They gave it to somebody else. Um, and the same day they gave it to somebody else was the same day I had my Detroit Renaissance interview. And I only interviewed because a friend of mine was like, hey, man, you should, you should, you should apply. I'm like, eh, he applied for me. He was like, I don't apply for him, for me. Came to my interview. I did an interview. Interview was cool after I got a chance to meet the girls and, you know, mind you, I have two little sisters who played, um, who at the time were still playing in Minnesota. So I got big 10 little sisters. So I'm watching these kids play and I know I I have a good sense of what girls talent is because I watch a lot of big 10 women's basketball and I'm watching them play. And I'm, I'm like, well, she's D one, she's D one, she's D one, she's high major. She's high major. What's going on here? You know, and they had a bad season the year before and they were all the whole the whole core of them were all juniors and one sophomore. I said, so wait a minute. I said, OK, maybe I'm dreaming because I, I have a bad habit of being extremely. It's not a bad, but I have a habit of being extremely optimistic and, and, and you know, being ambitious, like astronomically ambitious, high aspirations. So I said, I could win two state titles with these girls. So I said, but wait, don't get ahead of yourself check out everything around the state to see how good they really are. So I watched a lot of AAU basketball that summer. And every time I would see a kid that was supposed to be this or supposed to be that, all it would confirm to me is like, well, yeah, my kid, with that group of kids I have, I have one of the best teams in the state, you know, and they proved to be the second best team in the state last year. We lost to Depsa, which is a top five team in the country. We lost to Chicago Simeon, which ended up winning the um, Illinois title. And we were on our way to winning our class title, um, class A title, when COVID shut everything down. Mm. You know, and, and that was a hard pill to swallow. So, you know, we were 22 and 2, blowing our way through the playoffs, and COVID shut us down, and everybody's coming back. One kid, the sophomore, you know, the 
sophomore, she's a junior now. She transfers, but all my juniors are now seniors. Every single. So I have eight seniors on my team, two dynamic incoming freshmen. We're loaded, you know, like extremely loaded. And, and, you know, I have a chance to, you know, win a state title right away. You know, that's something that a lot of people don't get a chance to do. But yeah, this year we haven't played, man. And, and it's, it's frustrating. So we're supposed to start practice Saturday. But finally, our governor just keeps pushing stuff back and we're supposed to start playing February 4th. If you're starting to play in February, like it's going to be an abbreviated season. Abbreviated. Um, but do, they, do you have I, any idea what your schedule's like or could be like? February 4th to uh, April 9th. April 9th is a state Oof. title game. Man. Uh, we had to push the, we just had a schedule from um, January 22nd till uh, the regular season it was supposed to end March 6th, but they pushed it back two weeks since they're pushing the start back two weeks. So I don't know. I have to, I have to move those first five games. So we have to reschedule some games and I don't, we don't know how we're going to do it. Cause you got the uh, conference we have to redo and things like that, but we're playing, we're playing some of the best teams in the state. You know, the goal is to is to finish the season ranked on ESPN. That'd be that'd be nice to be a top twenty five team. You know, have to go undefeated to do that. Um, Blue Star Media has us ranked number ten in the in the country. But yeah. I was going to say they've got you've got several people on several girls on the team. I know one's committed to Bradley, one's committed to Northern Kentucky. I'm probably missing several here, but those are just some of the. One's going to Dayton, one's going to Wagner College in Manhattan. The kid going to Northern Kentucky is a Miss Basketball candidate. If she was four inches taller, she would, she would be at, at a Power Five school. You know, um, we're we're stacked. But the best thing about us is they play like they're like we're in Europe. They have a European coach, hmm. you know, so that ball moves. The ball, you know, it's a lot of ball screen entry plays. You know, with a lot of. Uh, back motion happening in between in between the ball screens and a lot of handoffs, a lot of player movements, player cuts, but a lot of spacing. We occupy corners, you know, we um, we sprint up into threes. Um, we 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 drive past shoot when we get the ball. You know, every time somebody passes it to you, you got to shoot right away, pass right away or drive right away. We make extra passes. We, we, we drive baseline, hit corners, slide up, refill corners. Like we do a lot of pro concepts that high school kids just don't do. You know, so when, when I talk my trash and I say we're better than everybody, people take um, exception to it because they think I'm just talking talent wise. No, we play the game a different way than a lot of high school basketballers play. It's not stand, dribble, 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 watch her play and make a pass or shoot. No, it's a five, it's a five player basketball. You know, and I think that is always going to give me the advantage until I run into other people who have a pro, who can teach a pro style to their kids. You know, high school basketball is so bad as far as like system. Mm -hmm. It's so bad. It's just what give the ball to the best player and let's watch her. We've done two interviews so far. We've kind of talked about high school basketball. I was talking about with Will Thomas about the time uh, we both went to BCL schools and he was in the BCL, you know, around the time that um, a little after when Carmelo Anthony was there and there were some other players that were in the league that were really good at his time, Rudy Gay and, and all that when he was a little bit younger. Um, and uh, the last interview we had, um, we geeked out about basketball in New York and uh, in the five boroughs and all that stuff. Um, so one thing I, I guess I'm wondering with you, and especially since we're talking uh, girls basketball here, it's a little bit different game. You got the same pro concepts you learn, but it's a little bit different game than, mm -hmm. than uh, the men's game, the boys game. Uh, what can you tell us that is different in your experience? What did you have to adjust with? Is there anything in particular that you look at the, the girls in the court and say, okay, I got to do this a little bit, a little bit differently um, in terms of adjustments? Um. You know, you have girls that are built more like boys and you have girls that are built more like girls. So the girls that are built more like girls, they will struggle more with doing one leg athletic and one leg balancing things, euros, jumping off one leg, you know, things like that because just because of hip hip strength, you know, hip flexibility and, and 
just that athletic pop, they don't have the athletic build as much as the girls who have less, less, you know, less hips or they have, they, they're built more boyish. They're a little bit more, they can do certain things a little bit differently. Um, but the main thing is, you know, people look at the girls game like, well, but they're not as athletic. Yeah, but the people they're playing is not as athletic. So there's no correlation to saying, oh, we can't do this because they're girls. Well, yeah, they just, they're going against other girls too. You know, so you can still run the exact same plays and, you know, kids might not be dunking, but on the high school level, a lot of boys don't dunk. No. You know, so, I mean, you, and the thing with girls is, girls are more likely to 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 let you coach them. Hmm. Because, you know, almost to a fault. Sometimes you you have to coach them too much. They don't they don't naturally come out of their own self. Boys are naturally like, nah, nah, I got it, I can do it. You know, so they they list they're more hard headed. Girls girls want to be taught the game. You know, so it's easier to have a pro style offense with a bunch of girls because you're going to have less alpha personalities. You know, that's so, really interesting. Yeah, so it's more it's it's easier to tell to tell a girl, hey, get off the ball run my set you know I, you can still be confident but you know hey let's let's play for the team you tell a boy you know hey stop dribbling and it might be the end of the world <laughs> <laughs> this thing smoking you know what i'm saying and, and i'm not saying they don't have that you don't have that you don't deal with that with girls you still deal with it with girls because a lot of it's too many it's too many men in the girls game including myself it's too many men in the girls game so you still have to deal with that testosterone you know um being hovering around girls where their dad thinks they should be this or this coach think they should be that but you sh it's it's different man it's more fluid with girls you know girls once you get girls once girls love you man they run through a brick wall but with girls you just can't come out they you i feel like with boys they can say you know what i don't like this guy but i'm doing this for me girls don't do that Girls like, I don't like them. So I'm not listening to them. You know what I'm saying? Like, so girls want to know that you care about them. Once girls know you care about them, they they they'll they'll do better. Girls are you have to be fair. You you can you can be tough on them, but you can't be tough on her and not be tough on her. They won't go for that. I feel like you can get away with that more with boys where you treat them differently. Girls, they all want to be true. They'll always tell you how you did for this person and didn't do for me. Hmm. And it keeps you on your toes. Like, and the things and then the things that you have to worry about with girls is it's a lot of it's a lot more introspection. You know, you get to you get too far ahead of yourself talking about X's and O's and, and they'll sit you down. Like, nah, we need to talk about what happened the other day when you yelled and I didn't do anything wrong. You go, uh, I <laughs> you're like but you did do something wrong but now nothing to get yelled at and it's like oh okay let's let's go undo this damage and you know and let's build from there and and, and for me i think it makes me a better father you know because i have a bunch of young kids and i have two young daughters you know so i think it makes me a better father because it's prepping me for when they become teenagers maybe one day you're not going to necessarily be a girl's coach who, who knows we don't know whether you'll whether right. you'll continue or not but let's let's say that in the future that you once again skip over you either become a boys coach whether it's at the high school level or you become an assistant do you think that this is definitely helps you um as grow as a coach to whoever you coach in the future i, I think obviously yes it would help with women because you're doing that now but do you think that's something that you could also carry over as a coach no matter who you're coaching really Right. Yeah. I think, I think it definitely, it definitely helps. I think it helps grow you as a coach, man, because so much of coaching is, is culture. And um, I came out that first year and I, and I realized, man, I was so stuck on being the best X's and O's guy, being the best talent developer and being, you know, just creating all these goons and killers that I never set down structural rules, but I never created a culture. You know, like, you no, know, I, I had a culture, like I naturally infused my culture, but I never verbalized it, hmm. you know, and, and one of the biggest things that I did early this year was I said, look, you know, let's just lay down cultural things, made every senior take a freshman and be responsible for a freshman, you know, gave them core values, champ, 
you know, communication, hard work, accountability, mindset, preparation, you know, and it just so happened to fit into the best word that it could fit into champ. So now it's on the back of our practice jerseys, on the back of our shooting shirts. And it's whenever something goes wrong, it's so beautiful. It works out that it always falls into one of those five things. A lot of things that can go wrong on a high school basketball team is going to fall into communication, hard work, accountability, mindset, as in, you know, positivity and, you know, your mentality and then preparation. And, and so now when they do something wrong, if I do something wrong, we just shot, we just use a key word like, okay, I got to be held accountable for that. You know, hey, I got to work harder on that. I got to communicate better, you know? And so they relate that, you know, they relate to that a lot better. They're, now they're starting to speak in core values, you know, and that's something I don't think I probably would have created right away if I didn't deal with so many different um, incidents of where culture was needed like not after it happened, before it happened. Because after it happens, now I'm telling you what you did wrong, but what if I already had it laid out? So if you did something wrong that was pre-discussed, I could say, hey, you just you just failed to communicate with me. You know, hey, you just you just failed to, to, to have accountability for your actions. There's a quote in an article that we looked up. He said, it's important to you. You don't want your kids to just go to college. You want them to succeed at college. Yeah. And yeah. you you say you hate when people say I want to get my kids into college, and your response is, "And then what?" And then what? So this yeah. this leads this leads into that idea. Like you're yeah. you're a you're coaching them to be a whole person rather than just a basketball player. Facts, facts, and, and you know if you see on you guys, you see everybody on Twitter on social media now. We all we all you know down the collegiate athlete, the high school athlete, and how flawed they are, how soft they are, and all these things that's wrong with them. But, you know, somebody had a quote the other day that said, the kids aren't soft, the adults are. And that's the realest thing ever. You know what I'm saying? Because we, everything the kids are, are what we gave, what we let them to be. You know, so if we've created a world where there's no accountability for these children, they don't communicate because of cell phones, you know, I, when the parents do all the communicating for them, they don't know what working hard means because you don't let them work hard. You don't push them to work hard. You don't teach them how to have the right mindset. You don't, you don't speak positivity to them every day. You don't speak life into them. You allow them to, to shoot for half. You know, you're not prepared. If, you know, I deal with, a, I deal with parents that don't have their crap together. What do you think your kid is going to be? Right. So when these kids, when, when you've sheltered them and you've kind of coddled them and you've been a helicopter parent and then now they go into college where you can't you can't be in a dorm room with them. And then their whole world comes crashing down and they're late to practice and then their coach is cussing them out and they're waiting for their coach to come rub them on the back. And their coach is like, I don't care because I'm going to get fired in two months if you don't play better. You know, and, and, and the transfer portal is like the freaking wild, wild west. You know, it's like it's like Istanbul um, meat market. It's, just, it's so much action in there. You know what I'm saying? It's like everybody, every kid is leaving after one year. I, I see kids transferring after playing 30 minutes their freshman year. I, I don't even understand it. Like, what are you, what are you sad about? You're playing, you know. But all that comes from all the lack of building and and fixing that's not happening in the high school level. You know, and the college world can't get soft because it's too, it's too, you know, either be killed. It's too, it's too do or die for the college world to be soft like the high school world, you know? So when they get to college, they run into a mean roadblock because they're not ready for college. Their high school coach didn't prep them from college. Their parents didn't prep them from college, you know? So that's why it's important. And then what? Okay. Shannon goes to Dayton. And then what? Is she going to be home next week? Or is she going to be um, A-10 freshman of the year? You know, is she going to be a four-year a four year varsity winner, letter, you know, letter winner? Yeah, that, that's, that's got to be the goal. Got to, and then forget the basketball part. Is she going to graduate? Is she right. going to get gain all the connection and networking from Dayton? You know, it's an engineering school. She's an engineer. She's, you know, she's going there for engineering. Is she going to meet with an alum, alum a booster who can get her a, uh, 
a, a five figure, close to six figure um, career at the age of 21. Taye, my, my, one, of, one of my twin, both of my twin sisters have full time jobs now. Taye could play overseas, could, could have gotten drafted. She, she has an IT job with Wells Fargo. Hmm. You know, that's the and then what? Mm-hmm. You know, so that, that's what's more important.